Hi, Ami. How are you doing? Hi, sir. I'm good, thank you. How are you? So, uh, did you try some questions on mechanics? Yes, I have. Um, from yesterday's lesson, when I looked at the things, I attempted some of the questions and the formula and everything works. So, yeah. Right. I haven't got many questions in my book to do with, like, the coefficient and mu, but right. I did use the concepts and okay. it worked. So. Excellent. Uh, so what I thought uh, after yesterday's lesson, I thought we should actually go back a little and then come forward. I think that'll be better. Yeah, for us. yeah. Uh, we need to, uh, I think uh, I need you to. know, review some concepts for moving forward. That's that's yeah. what I thought. So <clears throat> we'll take a few cases where we'll first uh, take up cases where there is no friction between the okay. body and the surface, and then we'll take a case which has friction. We'll also consider a flat surface and an inclined plane. So that should give you a good start for doing most of the questions in your exercise, okay? Okay, cool. Right, that sounds so great, let me sir. just yeah, share with you uh, what I have today for you. So this is what I was talking about. So you also said when there are many objects which are connected with a string, how do we work with that situation? So that's the first okay. example which I have taken. Once we understand this example, then we will take up um, uh, questions like this, where we will consider stopping distance of a car uh, when we are given oh. friction. And uh, we'll also see uh, th that similar kind of uh, body when we have friction yeah. uh, between the body and the table, right? So uh, we'll look into all these questions, these three questions today. So that should give you a good foundation, okay? Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Let's begin with the very first one, which I'm saying as my example number one, uh, where we have connected particles. Whenever we say uh, the mass of a body or a box, we basically consider that to be a particle only, a point where the whole mass is being concentrated. So that is mm -hmm. the basic. String they are connected with is also supposed to be very light string. And light string means the mass of the string is negligible. And uh, so that's what we'll consider. And the acceleration is same for both the masses. The tension also is uh, translated uh, with the string with the same tension, right? So tension the string is also same, correct? So that is because yeah. of inextensible light string. Is that clear to you? So these are the assumptions which we have yeah. already discussed in previous videos. Now I think those points are clear to you, right? I'd like you to read the question and then we'll look into the solution. Okay. So two boxes with mass of 12 kg and 10 kg are resting on a table. Mm -hmm. The horizontal force of 40 newtons is applied by a person to the 10 kg box as shown in the figure. Find the acceleration of each box and find the tension of in the cord. Got it. So uh, mm -hmm. to give you a heads up on these solutions, when we are looking into acceleration, as I said, acceleration is going to be same, right? So because you know, it, it is to be considered as one system, right? Both are connected system. Oh, system. Yeah. So the acceleration, if it is A here, it is A there. So the acceleration of the whole system is exactly same, right? So it's just same. So you could also think about the whole system has one box. Do you see that? Okay. So Instead that, of individual boxes. Yes. Yeah. And it becomes like a previous problem where you had oh. only one box. You get my point. And there's one oh, four, yeah. which is FP, correct? Mm. You get the idea. Mm -hmm. So one box yeah. and one yeah. force. And you know from Newton's law that acceleration A is net force over mass, correct? So net force over here right. is FP, correct? Over mass, which is M1 plus M2. Do you see how simple it becomes? Total um, mass is M1 plus M2 okay. of this whole thing, right? So that becomes yeah, yeah. the value of A. So without even thinking much, you can straight away get yeah. the solution. You understand this concept? Yeah, yeah, that but was really clear. So that we could have any number of boxes in between, doesn't really matter. Add all their oh, masses okay. together, right? One mm -hmm. external force is being applied. That is what it is. And that is the only force we are neglecting in this case. We are saying there is no friction, right? So we are saying yeah. no friction. Let's be clear about it, right? 
we are not even saying i'll not say negligible negligible means no friction okay uh okay. it's an ideal situation yeah is this the only case where you would consider it as like or well, one system like can i draw a box around and say this is one thing is there other cases in like the book that was say any number of boxes on the same surface where there is no friction okay. can be considered as one box let's keep oh, it like this for time being right okay yeah so, yeah but what we will do here is we'll actually uh, go through the whole uh, concept and see do we get the same result right if it is the same result mm -hmm. yeah for you correct the other concept right. is finding the tension so i'm saying tension is f of t now whenever you want to find tension in that case what should you do in that case you should always consider the last box the okay. idea here is if you consider the last box the only force which is moving this is the tension you get my point oh right but if i pick like the first box or something you have to also consider the yeah, fp force already so the tension okay. minus force you yeah, there's more it's too much yeah yes. okay but so, in the last box right so the last box. only force mm -hmm. acting is tension you get my and that's point? what we want to find right yeah. yeah so this is a force tension and this force is m into a the mass here is m2 and a is acceleration we already found what a is so it is equals to we will actually change this to fp times m over m1 plus m2 do you see that because we already found a, a was oh sorry what did i do uh, wait i wanted to highlight it okay so this a i substituted here do you see that uh this is m um, and what i did was i substituted the value of a as fm over m1 plus m2 and i got the tension you see two simple straight answers you get the idea wait where did where did the fp go sorry is fp fn yeah, yeah. fp is this oh okay okay cool yeah so you just substituted that in yeah i just substituted then... yeah fp and multiplied by m2 Uh, I see. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. I wrote it in a different way, <laughs> but you got the idea, right? That's right. Yeah, yeah. This yeah, is, yeah. This is A. <laughs> so you cool. get your result, right? But anyway, let's go through yeah. the whole process and understand it, and then we'll get back to this. That'll be better, right? So how do we normally do it? Normally, we have to draw the free body diagram, correct? So we'll draw the free body diagram or the force diagram for each. So we can consider them as individuals. So if you consider the first box then in that case you have a normal acting and the weight of the box there is force external applied to it and there is tension in the string so that becomes the free body diagram for the first one now for the second right. one, we have m2 and the only force acting will be the tension force as i was telling you earlier right right and yeah there is mass which is due to gravity giving you a normal fn2 So that is the free body diagram for the second box, correct? Now this gives you yeah. all the equations required. Basically, two equations it gives you, and with those two equations, two unknowns, acceleration and tension, you can find, correct? So let's head to the next slide, where these are the two situations which we have seen: box one and box two, right? Box one is the front box. Yeah. Box two is the back one. now in the front we have this fp minus the tension which acts in the opposite direction and there is acceleration a which is constant for both of them the whole system so m1 a right in newton's second law it says net change in force is equals to mass into acceleration right if there is a force applied right, which is greater than 0 mm -hmm. then the system will be having an acceleration and therefore we have this equation similarly for the next one the only force is ft and the acceleration is a therefore ft should be equals to m2a so we get these two equations as expected for the two boxes right that's clear to you yeah yeah that's clear Now, you see fp minus ft and this is ft if you add these two equations what do you get well ft and ft the cancel the ft will cancel you yeah add them so as soon as you add them ft ft will cancel on the right hand side you get m1a plus m2a that means that the force is equal to a a times sum of the masses like considering them as the same system do you see right. that you got the same equation yeah 
some of the oh, so as if you, yeah, yeah, yeah. So as, as one box, is, mm -hmm. as expected, the force applied over the total mass. Do you see that? Yeah. Formula, yeah. With all this, so you now you know a shortcut method. Now substitute the values given to you, get your answers, and it's good to write your three significant figures, right? So write the answer yeah. significant figures. That's it. Once you know what A is, then you know what Ft is. Ft is the product of A with the mass 2, correct? Mm -hmm. The multiply acceleration with mass 2 and get your answer. You get the idea. Oh, um, right. So, so simple. Now, mm -hmm. what you learn here, that there could be any number of masses. Just add these masses, right? And the tension, you should always go to the last box, Mn, where N is the last box. Do you see that? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 Gives you the formula, right? Acceleration is external force over sum of all these masses. So all these questions right. can be done by this simple concept. Is that clear to you? Yeah, now it's clear. Yeah. Before I was trying to memorize it, now I actually understand it. So yeah. <laughs> can you summarize your learning here? Yes, I can. So um, when we were talking about the two boxes, um, when we on the same plane, um, keeping in mind there's no friction acting on it, the right. two boxes we consider as one system when it's attached by a, like a light inextensible string. Right. Um, and right. then when you've got the masses, when we're considering it as one box, that means a force acting um, that, that's pulling one box, if you take that um, force, you divide it by the total number of masses. So it doesn't matter how many boxes there are, you just add it all up, um, mm -hmm. you'll get your acceleration. And acceleration is constant throughout the whole system, um, like you explained by Newton's third law. And then um, right. when you showed me how you um, got the equations, you 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 made free body diagrams for the individual boxes. And it makes sense since um, M1, sorry, M2 being the, the force pulling, that would be, have another force acting on it. Oh no, yeah. so that's F, is that M1? Oh, M1, M1 sorry, we have the force, force pulling. Right. So here we oh, have- yeah, so the first box. Yeah, first yeah, yeah box. two forces. So the pulling force and the tension. Yes. Um, and then you've got the normal reaction and then the weight going down. Whereas the last box will only have the tension acting on it. Yes. So when you want to find tension, always go to the last box. So- Very good yeah. point. So that is the summary. If there are n okay. number of boxes, add the, all, all the masses, right? Divide mm -hmm. the external force with the masses to get the acceleration, part one. Part two, okay. finding the tension. Tension is equal to the force which is being applied on the last box. That is the only force right. being applied to the last box. So go to the last box, yeah. right? And then, so much you know, yeah, the tension is mass of the last box into the acceleration, you get your result, right? That is what it is. Perfect. Is that clear to you? Yeah, Beauty. that's really clear. Now, we'll get to the second type of example. Now we will introduce friction. So whenever there is a friction, okay. frictional force always acts equal and opposite, right? Kind of, it resists mm -hmm. motion. That is Newton's third law. So there's always equal and opposite force. The normal, which we always talk about, is also Newton's third law. Action is equal to the reaction. So it... Okay tries to go down with the, because of its weight and there's the equal reaction stays there. So some of the forces, when the system is like stationary, in this case, it is like zero. Okay. Now it is also zero. The, we say the system is in equilibrium when there is no acceleration, when acceleration is zero, correct? But when acceleration is not zero, that means external force or some force is there which is greater than zero, right? That is what it means. Absolute value of that force is greater than zero. Okay. Now, when mm -hmm. we have this friction, then, of course, the acceleration will be smaller because a part of the force is utilized to overcome the friction. So, the result yeah. you're going to get now with friction will be having lesser magnitude than what it had earlier. Oh, okay. This right. is to keep in mind. So, if there is a question where both the parts are there, you should check your answer very clearly that with friction, acceleration should have been lesser, right? Because some force oh. was there to neutralize the frictional force. So, only the right, additional right. force worked in pulling the whole system in one direction, giving yeah. that motion, right? So, that is what uh, Newton's second law helps us to understand. Net force we are talking about, net force. You may apply 10 kg, 20 kg, doesn't matter. We have to see the net okay. force being applied at that point. Is that okay? Oh, okay. That's what it yeah. Is. Now, can you please read this question? 
Yeah. So two boxes with mass of M1 and M2 are attached at the end of a light inextensible string. The string passes over a fixed light pulley as shown in the figure. The coefficient of friction between M2 and the table is mu. Find general expressions for acceleration A of each box, tension FT in the cord, and then find A and FT in um, if M1 equals 6 kg, M2 equals 4 kg, and mu equals 0.25. Correct. So when you give you the mass and all these things, two significant figures, we're expecting answer to two significant figures. That's the whole idea. Right. But we'll learn how do we find a general expression. So yeah, as in most of my videos, we're always looking into very simple cases, some general solutions, so that you can actually do all the questions related to this from your book, correct? Now, let's look yeah. at the free body diagram in this particular case. It is slightly different from the previous case, right? So let's consider, let's say mass one, right? This is hanging. In that case, there, it is kind of similar. There is a force which is M1G due to gravity acting downwards and equal and opposite reaction FT acting upwards, right? So this yeah. is when it is like not moving at all. But actually speaking, we are considering that there is an acceleration. When there is an acceleration, that means the system is not in equilibrium, right? Acceleration means right. not in equilibrium. So we will assume that since this is not in equilibrium, the movement is downwards, right? So that means M1G is definitely greater than FT, right? Yeah. That means M1G is definitely greater than FT. And that's the reason why we have an acceleration A, which down. is greater than zero. Does make sense? Right. Yeah, yeah. That is our first thing. So this line is longer than the other one purposely, just to show you that this okay. force downward acting is much greater than the frictional force. Oh, I mean, the yeah. tension in the string. Okay. But the tension in the string is forwarded exactly same value to the other mass, since the string is inextensible and light. So we have the same tension at mass 2. And therefore, in mass 2, the force which pulls the mass 2 is the tension Ft, correct? That yeah. is pulling the second mass. But we have friction this time. Friction force F, F I am writing here. And always, what is friction force equals to? Well, always friction force F, F will be equal to coefficient of friction times the normal force. Normal at this point, Fn. So that is the value of frictional force, right? If a body is heavier, in that case, it will be like more. So, so the, when you say Fn, you mean the one that's acting upward, the normal reaction yes. force? Yes, 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 normal. Oh. Normally in the books, we say this is normal N, and this is tension T. But I'm oh, right. right. Okay. So, Fn for normal, OK? So you're saying this, the force acting upwards like this times the coefficient of friction would give friction for force. force. Frictional force. Oh. So it is proportional. Okay. It is proportional to the normal force. Do you understand? Oh. So the frictional yeah. force is always okay. and that constant of proportionality is mu, the coefficient of friction. Is that clear? Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this gives us all the required equations. So we know the normal at this particular point, second, is equal to M2G. That is normal, right? And friction force is mu times yeah. normal. So it is mu times m to g, right? Mu times m to g. Yeah. In the yeah. second body, the acceleration a will cause is caused because of the force here, right? How much is this force? This force is basically equal to f two uh, minus f t minus f f yeah. tension minus the friction. So tension minus friction is actually equals to m two a. It will substitute the value of frictional force as mu times the normal force, which is M2G. So we get our expression, which is tension Ft minus mu times M2G is equals to M2A. You get the idea? Yes, but what happened if we don't know the coefficient of uh, friction? I know we know it in this question, or do we? So we will take another example. That's a good thing. Oh. I have not shared with you the third example. In that case, we don't know coefficient yeah. of friction. We'll figure it out. Okay. okay. So it's the yeah. same equation working in it in the other way. In that case, I'll give you acceleration. Then you can find, right? Um, right, right, right. 
Oh, because they all equal yeah. each other. In this, oh, okay. I'll give you some other value to figure it out, right? But you know, this is the equation mm -hmm. we got from the second mass. And in the first case, we it is very simple: m1 g and f2 t, and net force is m1 g minus f t, and that should be equal to m1 a. M1 a. This body is that clear to you now? Yeah. So we got two yeah. equations from the two free body diagrams which we created. Basically, we are saying that the net force is mass into acceleration, right? We are saying the force is equals to m a. This is what we are saying. Is that clear to you in both the cases? Right? Yeah. In the Newton second. Case, yeah. Mm -hmm. This is what we are using. Now we'll take up these two equations and solve. Correct. As I was saying earlier, you could actually consider this as one system and also solve as shown here, right? You could do yeah. that, but we'll not get into this now. We'll come back to this later. Now, we have these okay. equations, as I was saying. We have equation number one and equation number two. Because of these two uh, masses, right? One hanging and the other one sliding on the table. And there is a friction force, mu, coefficient of friction. Now, if you add the above equations, what happens? If you add the above equations, Ft and Ft gets cancelled. And now, yeah. since the tension has been the only variable left unknown, it is acceleration A. You can easily isolate A in this particular case, as shown. <laughs> Bring those terms with A together, and then divide by that sum of masses, right? And then you get your expression for A. Is that clear to you? Yeah, yeah. So that becomes A for us. Now you can notice. The sum of masses is in the denominator. That is keeping both the systems together. You get the idea, right? Mm -hmm. And the numerator is what? The numerator is, actually speaking, because of the frictional force, their addition, one is the force which is being, which is being, uh, which is the tension force, right? The other one is, yeah. the, so those, that system, this Friction. is the net force, which is in the numerator. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. Basically, the numerator is the difference of these two forces. And the denominator, that is the net force, right? So if I have this system here, uh -huh. right, then the friction force is acting on this di direction. That should be taken away from the force which is acting on the force, force tension. Yeah. Right. So, so you get your expression, correct? That is what I was trying to say, that you could have treated this as one system. In that case, the additional force will be M1G. M1G is this force acting downwards, correct? Take away mu times F of N, which is the frictional force acting here. Yeah, that's clear. And the total mass is M1 plus M2 the, times A, and that gives you the answer for acceleration straight away. But anyway, even if you work with these two equations, not a big deal. You can get your answer right in two statements, correct? Now, let us, mm -hmm. now we know what acceleration is. So we can work with the second equation as shown here, right? So from the second equation, we can rearrange and find the tension in the strain. So the force of tension Ft is now equals to M1g minus M1a, taking M1 common g minus a and substituting the value of a, which is right there, correct? We can rearrange um, the formula and get our result, right? So G minus this, take a common denominator, do all this working. And what you get is the tension is product of masses over sum of masses times one plus mu times G. So that is the expression for tension. But anyway, it is kind of simple for you to understand. The simple formula here, tension is, go with this very first one. That is equation number two. Use equation number two, right? Straight away. You know acceleration, correct? Yeah. Substitute acceleration, other two masses, calculate Ft, done. But this is My, to show you uh, that here is your general expression for the solution. Is that clear to you? Because oh, okay. find yeah. the general expression. Otherwise, once you get the value of A, substitute in second equation, find tension, Ft. Mm -hmm. You get the idea. Right. The so two ways. Is, yeah, yeah. Because the question said, Oh, you find a general expression. Do you see that? The idea is to find a general right. expression and then calculate. So that is why we went into all this, right? So general expression. So the general expression, sorry, does that mean it works with like most equations then? Every, every equation. Yeah, it's yes. general. Yes, yes. Okay. Right. So that is how you will do it. Now let's do our calculations. As I said, now we are given some values. So it, in this case, we are given values to two significant figures. Substitute these values mm -hmm. in your formula, which you received. 
but round your answer to two significant figures that is kind of important is that clear okay yeah yeah that's clear so that is how we're going to do if friction is involved between the two surfaces right and in this case right. one body which is hanging it is as good as applying external force right external force yeah, yeah. Have, this is fp for you okay now let me take the last example uh, which is uh, here okay so can you please read this question yeah so on a level road the stopping distance of a car traveling at 60 kilometers per hour is 24 meters find the coefficient of friction between the tires and the road and find the stopping distance if the road going downhill is at an angle of 8 degrees sorry so as you were saying earlier if coefficient of friction is not given to you then what can we yeah. do right. so that is what it is so in this case you know when the car is running you hit the brakes it stops after some time so that is the situation mm -hmm. before us it stops only because there is a friction force right on the road otherwise it right. never stop yeah so because of that friction we have deacceleration we are expecting value of a which should be negative negative going mm -hmm. down right so in this case we know that the speed of the car is 60 kilometers per hour in 24 meters it stops so first thing very clear we have to convert the 60 kilometers per hour in meters, meters per second yeah that is the first thing right so you could definitely do 60 times 1000 divided by 3600 uh, right? and get your 3, answer 3, yeah. Okay. yeah once you know that that is your uh, velocity v this is your initial velocity let me write this as u right you know your all your formulas for save right s u a v right you know all those relations yeah. okay so you yeah. have thought of those relations yeah so this is the initial velocity u you know final velocity in this case will be zero the formula will be v square minus u square equals to 2 as since we know that the stopping distance is uh, given to us s correct mm -hmm. So clearly from here, we can find the value of A, right? So from here, you get the value of A. Is that clear to you? So we've got you, uh, we've got, got the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. V and U, so we can find A, yeah. S is also given to us, right? Oh, Are and S, yes. So you get A also, correct? So we now right. know what right. A, so now simply, it is the situation where you have a mass on a table kind of a thing. Table is being rowed in this case, right? Yeah. <laughs> Which acts on this, as I was saying, is the frictional force, F. Is that clear to you? Is the frictional yeah. force, yeah. right? Now, frictional force is acting on this, and therefore, because of this, it stops. We need right. to find yeah. the coefficient of friction, correct? Now, so yeah. if this is mg, for example, then the normal here will be the frictional force times mu. Is that okay? So friction um, because be equals to mu times yeah, for this mg. Mu times, yeah. Mu times mg is now the force which is acting on it. So that is the external force acting on it, correct? Oh. And what is acceleration? Because of the second law, you relate external. This is external force negative because it is on the acting in the reverse direction negative mu mg over the mass m so m and m cancel so acceleration equals to mu g we know acceleration and so the ratio of acceleration over gravity will give you value of mu you get the idea oh do you understand right. yeah so yeah i do i do we did the reverse calculation we knew the velocity, we knew the stopping distance, we square, v square minus u square will give us the acceleration of the body. Because the body is on acceleration, that means there is an external force. In this case, the external force is the mm -hmm. friction. Who values mu? Friction, yeah. Normal, which is mg. Substituting that, we get our result. Get the so, idea. wait, how come it was negative? Is it because the frictional force you made is negative? Yeah, yeah. Even when you do the calculation, we'll see that in calculation very clearly, how we get all this, right? Right. So that becomes our... So, yeah, us, yeah. Sorry, just a quick thing. So if I had to find mu as like a positive value, I'll just do ug equals minus a. So mu equals minus a over g. 
you are right minus a over g okay. because a will be negative from our calculations you understand final value is zero yeah. so this is negative you right right so you get a positive value mu has to be positive and greater than zero right yeah so okay. that's very so clear, that's clear. Yeah. yeah it is not a very big number it's very small number i mean it could be like oh. 0.1256 less than one kind of right so that is yeah, what yeah yeah okay most of the time less than yeah. one is what you are expecting most of the time less, less than one. one yeah yeah just like a nice check oh, that yeah, would be right. good to know so less than one yes <laughs> cool okay. uh so that is really a high value less than one is good estimate in all these cases okay? yeah it could be 0.5 0.67 right okay so now we know the coefficient of friction once we know the coefficient mm -hmm. of friction we can now do the second example which is find the stopping distance if the road is going downhill at an angle of 8 degrees do you understand yeah of 8 degrees okay. mg sin theta is the force which acts downwards against it will be the friction and you know the coefficient of friction so in this case you can find the stopping distance okay this is the concept uh, right let's see yeah this. yeah definitely right let's see this all right it's important to understand the whole concept before really getting into the calculation because calculations mm -hmm. uh, you know actually divert you from the concept so first thing is understand um, the concept yeah yeah for the calculation right let's get back to the concept mm -hmm. once again uh, so now once again can you please read the question yeah so on a level road the stopping distance of a car traveling at 60 kilometers per hour is 24 meters okay. find the coefficient of friction between the tires and the road let's do this part first and find yeah. okay yeah let's do this part first right so first mm -hmm. part we have to find the coefficient of friction between the tires and the road right now what are we given we are given 60 kilometers per hour we just converted that into meters per second it comes to 16 to 1000 divided by 3600 the value is 16.67 meters per second you could round yeah. it 16.7 at this stage also you could but there is oh. no point you are using calculator these days let it be as any number or decimal okay. will only worry when we come yeah. to answer to round you can see idea okay so I, yeah, i'm yeah. going to make sense the figures in between right i may write mm -hmm. uh significant figures in between that's fine with me unless and until i'm okay. writing an answer right right yeah so that's what is important concept, because sometimes rounding, okay. uh, it becomes very difficult to get the correct answer you know yeah <laughs> if i round you, you to errors. i might get slight yeah. i might get this wrong i might get this wrong so it is not right. Right. right second part of this is uh force of friction is the net force in this particular case because you know there is no other force acting you just applied the brake and left left it right now the car has to stop right. on its own and it is stopping only because of the frictional force between the tires and the road and therefore mm -hmm. we are saying this force of friction has to be negative because the car is moving forward and the friction force is acting backwards Back. so minus yeah. of f should be equals to normal into mu that is what the frictional force is so frictional force is mu times mg so we get one of our equation which is what is this yeah. force which is trying to stop the car second thing is from yeah. the newton second law we know that the net force acting is divided by the mass to get the acceleration that is what newton second law is right the acceleration mm -hmm. is divided by the mass net force in this case is frictional force and therefore we will divide this frictional force by the mass which is mu mg so we are going to divide mu mg by mass m and m cancel minus mu g is your acceleration oh wait so the only force acting the net force is only the frictional force because yes. we we've come to a stop yes um, nothing else that's clear okay so, okay easily we get this acceleration so in whatever is given to us we also know now acceleration in terms of coefficient of friction do you see that right right we switch yeah. that coefficient the mu and g we know that the initial velocity is 16.67 meters per second final velocity is zero since it comes to an halt a stop and it is a distance of 24 meters which is covered during this time so v square minus u yeah. square equals to 2 as is the best formula to use substitute a with mu g because you want to find what mu is right not really the acceleration in this right. case, in this case so now you isolate mu you get this particular formula which is a good formula to remember or to make a note of in such situation v square okay. minus u square divided by 2 gs 
is the value of mu. Now, yeah. such all your values okay. calculate, round it to two decimal places, three significant figures, two significant figures, because all the values were given to two significant figures. Significant figures. You get your answer, right? Which is zero point five nine. Is this part clear to you? Yeah, yeah, this is clear. Part A is done. Part B is find the stopping distance if the road is going downhill at an angle of eight degrees. Okay, let's see this. So now we have a slope. So on this slope, you have done uh, slope problems, correct? So the mass is acting downwards. That is the weight of the body, the car in this case, right? So you understand this free body diagram, Amy? Can you explain this free free body diagram to me? Um. Yeah, so yeah. wait, does that say FT going right? It's quite small. I think it says FT, but friction, friction. Oh, frictional force. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. So um, I, get, I understand the normal reaction is perpendicular yes. to the plane that it's on, and then MG, so the weight of it is acting down, down. but I thought the MG would be where it says MG cos theta. No, this I, is, I would have, yeah, I don't know, understand that. Okay, so this is the component of weight. This angle here is theta. Do you see this angle is theta here? So this angle is yeah. also theta. So this is the right angle triangle, right? Therefore, that oh. is theta. This. So we have resolved mg into two components. So this downward force mg yeah. is being resolved into two components. You see that? Oh, it's mg cos theta and, and mg M sin theta. Mg sin theta. So one component. Oh, it's because it said ma sin theta. Oh, that is acceleration. Yeah, yeah that is acceleration, right? So M mg is. Uh, oh. So wait here. So this force is mg sin theta. mg sin theta. So this mg is, is mg sin theta mm -hmm. and mg cos theta. Oh, okay. So mg is split into two components. Oh, right. Right. Okay. So if you make a yeah, that makes sense. These two components. Yeah. The drawing is not to the scale, right? right. I press that mg uh, much longer only to show you that's more than frictional force. <laughs> that was the idea. Right. But yeah. the other lines are much smaller. They should have mm -hmm. been even bigger, right? That's the whole idea. Yeah. yeah. So I do understand your confusion. It's mainly because uh, I kind of elongated the the movement part, right? Mm. But I get the concept now, so that's, that's all right. That's very good. Okay. So what we are seeing here is that the normal force is equals to mg cos theta. Frictional force is mu times the normal force. So it is mu times mg cos theta. That is what frictional force is. But... The force which is okay, acting, yeah. there is definitely a net force which makes the whole system move in this particular direction because you are going down the hill, right? This is going down the hill right. at an angle of 8 degrees in this particular case. So definitely, mg sine theta is greater than the frictional force. Therefore, it is going down, right? So net force F, this is the net force F for me, right? So net force is F mg sine theta minus F of friction, right? Force due to friction. Yeah. So including the value of the frictional force, which is here into F of F, we get the net force equals to mg sine theta minus mu times mg cos theta, right? And we know that net force from the Newton's second law is equals to mass into acceleration, right? Is equals to mass into right. acceleration. So we substituted MA Substitute. for F the net force. And on the right hand side, is, we have mg sine theta minus mu mg cos theta. M and M cancel from all these three terms. Acceleration mm -hmm. can now be written as g sine theta minus mu g cos theta. Is that clear to you? Yeah. Correct. You could take g common, as I did later, you could take g common, right? And write this as sine yeah, theta expensive. minus mu times cos theta as I have written here in the form. Now, it's the yeah. calculation yeah. of what we did earlier. V square minus U square equals to 2 AS. Now, we want to find what S is, right? Stopping distance. Right. First, yeah. So, stopping distance is V square minus U square over 2A. Wow. We know the value of acceleration, and we can substitute that value in the denominator. Final velocity 
is zero, initial velocity is given to us. We substitute that velocity of 16.67, which we have found in meters per second, and do our calculations. We get 31.8 meters as the stopping distance in this particular case. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. So is this part clear to you, Amy? Yeah, it is. I'm actually, I don't understand how I just grasped that. <laughs> it must be your <laughs> teaching because but when you, when I looked at it like before, I did not like understand a word of it. And then um, you did explain it before, but now I actually like actually get it. Clear, crystal clear. So right? Thank you for that. Yeah. Oh, good. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks to you. Right. So because, you know, it's, it's my students who make me work hard, harder and harder so that I can get through, you know, and I really love that. <laughs> So, you know, yeah, you but so sort of like that honestly that outstanding that. because I, I get it. Like I actually understand it uh, because sometimes when uh, if you explain something and because in the book it's not quite clear, that's why um, I come to you and then you explain it really well because now I can, uh, now I'm actually excited to answer all the questions yeah. in my book because like yeah. I actually understand it because I don't like this whole memorizing thing because it's not going to get me far in the long term. There know? is no need to memorize. You have seen in this chapter, right? Right. Friction, yeah. not friction. Yeah. If there is a friction, mu times f of n. Correct. Yeah. Net force, net force is total sum of forces. Now, when there is friction, yeah. minus frictional force. Exactly same as earlier. Uh, you get the idea. Yeah. Yeah. Now, here there is one thing very important to see. When it was on the level ground, 24 meters was the stopping distance for the same speed. But now, right. with this angle of 8 degrees, it is 31.8 meters. You know how much percentage change it is? 31.8 meters. Well, we calculate. Calculation. 31.8 yeah. minus, minus. 24 divided by 24 okay. times 100. You get more than yeah. that value. You get the idea. So when oh. you break down the slope, be careful that if normally you're thinking you can break and stop at distance of, let us say, 10 meters, then downward yeah. 30 meters, not 10 meters. Right, right. So, I mean, much uh, higher, I mean, you understand, it is 30% higher, not 10. I mean, yeah. 30 meters you will need, right? Get my point. Yeah, yeah. 30% higher. So, as, That's so, a right, lot, yeah. When you're driving, you have to be really careful, right? Because these gradients right. down the hill, sometimes they're very steep. They're not 8%. They're much, much more. Yeah. <laughs> 8 yeah, so it'll have a much higher percentage. Yeah. So, when you so, have those, uh, snake type of roads, there you expect around this much, right? Seven, eight, six, seven, eight percent, right? Right. There are many roads yeah. kind of really hilly, right? So yeah, this, oh. we have this one road in UK. It's just this one section of the street where you go into town, and it's so steep. Like honestly, like up here, like this. And I don't understand how people like go up there because that's why my mom and dad always try and avoid that section because it's just too dangerous. And cars are coming both ways, so like it's like and really narrow. Yeah. So it's just a no go. It's a no go zone. <laughs> so Amy, let me yeah. give you our state of Nova Scotia, Nova Scotia province. You mm. have to visit Nova Scotia if you want to see the roads. I mean, those roads are like kind of like this. They are like constantly <laughs> like going and up. And that is the best. I'm telling you, Canadians oh my are God. cyclists. And, you know, in many cycling, yeah. areas, you'll find Canadian team to be very strong contenders. Most of them, you'll find them practicing in Nova Scotia highways. <laughs> oh, I should not say highways. To get good, yeah. On highways, you're not allowed to bike. But right. uh, parallel yeah. roads, parallel roads, okay, somewhere close by. But most uh, of them are like so hilly, like so. It's like a Scotland mm -hmm. of our um, Canada, and you know, oh. yeah, we have a lot of Scottish people living there. I'll definitely check that out if I come yeah, after all this COVID's over. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes for sure. Amazing. Uh, so that reminds me, those roads. I've been there, yeah. driven there. And I was so amazed to see oh. that most of the time I could always see so many mm. cyclists going up, down, up, down. I mean, it is like they need a lot of stamina. Yeah. You even I cannot imagine. Oh my God. Yeah. You have to drive your car yeah. in third gear. And those cyclists, they are just like going up and down. Anyway, it's a very beautiful. Yeah, but like, especially at that, yeah, especially at that like gradient, if yeah. you just want to stop halfway as a cyclist. Oh my God. <laughs> like, <laughs> imagine, if, imagine. You're down, <laughs> if you're coming down oh. and you see a moose on the road because this area is like filled with moose moose is like oh. antelope right this is the biggest on the land yeah yeah 
and they are very common there. So moose, if <laughs> then you're gone. <laughs> that is danger to another level. I cannot, <laughs> I can't even picture it. I'm scared. Oh my god. Yeah, but that was a really relatable thing. So I'll keep that in mind. You know, the next time I see these things. Yeah, I'll I'll share some videos on uh, Nova Scotia with you. Oh yes, yeah. please. Yeah. Because yes, please. those that landscape is amazing. So beautiful. Uh, we have mm -hmm. a place which is called Skywalk. If you go on that trail, Skywalk. You feel as yeah. if in the sky. It's For so real? Amazing. E even oh from my the God. picture, even from the picture, you can see. Oh man, this is yeah. like on the sky. In the picture, also you can see it. Photograph. So the name delivers. It's exactly oh, what the name is. is like skywalk. Oh my God. Skywalk. Skywalk is real skywalk. I mean, it's not that kind of skywalk. We, they make it on glass and all. No, no, it's a yeah. hill. Normal hill. I mean, you walk there. Oh, wow. Skywalk. It's not a yeah, ground. Yeah, that sounds ground, amazing. Ground. No, 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 no. Uh, no this natural ground. <laughs> this is skywalk. All right. Is it so? Yeah, but I, I don't know. I'm kind of scared of heights, so like I'm not sure about that. But it, it does sound really intriguing. Yeah, it is like <laughs> on a normal hill, right? Is it the high? Is, it is so yeah. misty. It is misty all the time there. Oh, it is so misty. It gives you as, so as if you're in the sky. In the clouds, yeah, yeah. In the sky. That is what the skywalk is actually. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, yeah, yeah. It's, it's beautiful, beautiful. And on the side, some wow. left and right, hundred meters distance, you can see some moose also very common and bald eagles oh. bald eagles so many nice. it's a beautiful landscape you'll love it yeah yeah <laughs> okay. wish we had some of that here but yeah sounds yeah. amazing sir correct and if you go in the sea what you see is like tons of whales tons of whales 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 like like as you can, you can I'll just send you see another, it. another video on just saying you know, so <laughs> we went in the zodiac to for this sightseeing on the whales. So I yeah. asked my guide like, uh, what is the probability of uh, seeing whales? He said, oh, don't worry, there are yeah. tons there. It's very difficult to even navigate through them. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. It is. Maybe all the whales from everywhere just came to Canada. Everywhere. They come there, right? Right. And then variety of whales, you know, variety of whales. Oh. It's not just different one species. Whale, different species, different varieties of whales. Nice. Beautiful shot. So it's like wow. it's like amazing landscape from top of the hill, you should say the mountains. Yeah. To the ocean. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. It's like it's like grasping every single aspect of yes. this like horizon. Yes, it <laughs> Love is. it. That's nice. Yeah. That's, yeah, that brings us to a nice um, end to all this. So yeah, I think sure. you've understood these concepts. Can you summarize some concepts quickly without any question or a picture? Like, what did you learn today? Okay, so um, we first started off with the uh, we went kind of back to the basics with the. Um, one system thing with two boxes connected by a light and extensible string on a surface without friction. And then we just focused on using Newton's second law and saying force equals mass times acceleration, sure. um, finding the total mass when you want to add them all up. Whenever you want to find the tension, just go to the last box since <laughs> the only force acting on it is the tension. Beautiful. So that made sense. And acceleration is constant throughout that whole system because yes. we're treating it as one system. Yes. Um, then you talked about um, when we have a box on a table and then you've got a pulley and then a box is hanging off it. So that's where we said the tension again is um, constant throughout the whole string because it's all light and ext inextensible. Um, and then we talked about this whole coefficient of friction, which that part it's new to me, but this whole mu idea is where, so you've got, um, let's say now we're talking about where there's friction acting on the box, which is on the table. And then now there's a frictional force. So this frictional force equals mu times um, the normal force. Good. And then this normal force. Yeah, so that's the finding, remember. And I'm not even trying to memorize it. Like I, it makes sense because I can just imagine the free body diagram in my head. And yeah. then I know the normal force is is mg so mu times yeah. mg would be that frictional force but you have to be aware because frictional force is working in the opposite direction you just put the negative sign there 
So yeah. just be clear about that one. Um, and then another key point you talked about was units, because I don't like slipping upon these really small marks. So mm. in the question, if they've given all the units in like two significant figures, just be aware that your answer when you give it finally in two significant figures. Perfect. And um, the rest of it was just um, like, you know, subbing in values into the SUVAD, knowing your equations, V squared equals like that. So just um, knowing that as well would be really good. But I think actually, like I get it like thoroughly. So I'm really happy. So thank you. So happy. You, sir, so yes. all the credit for you. Thank you so yeah, much. I feel so good I about it. it. You, you have understood the whole yeah, job has been done. I'm so happy. Now solve some questions. If there's any difficulty, share. Yes. I and then we'll see if, from there where to go. Okay. All the best. Enjoy okay, your. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah. Bye. All right. I appreciate it so much. Thank you. Bye.